Hey, and welcome back for another ISO Bytes video series. In this video series, we'll talk about ISO 42001 AI management system. I'll cover all of the clauses four through 10, as well as all of the Annex A controls and give you everything you need to get your organization certified. The next section is Annex 6, AI system lifecycle. Now this is the largest section of the Annex A controls. So we'll go into detail about all of the controls. It's broken into two subsections. The first is A.6.1, which is management guidance for AI system development. To ensure that the organization identifies and documents objectives and implements processes for the responsible design and development of AI systems. So in short, what this means is that this section of Annex Controls wants to ensure that management is giving comprehensive guidance for the use of AI systems, but also the development of AI systems. So the two controls here are A.6.1.2, Objectives for Responsible Development of AI System. Now again, this is a subjective thing, but you need to determine in your own terms what is the responsible development definition within your organization. What does it mean to use AI responsibly? So, and this needs to be defined by leadership. So the, or, the control language says, the organization shall identify and document objectives to guide the responsible development of AI systems and take those objectives into account and integrate measures to achieve them in the development life cycle. Basically, you need to identify those overarching goals, those kind of guideposts that the people actually implementing AI systems can use to determine if they're using the systems responsibly. The next control is A.6.1.3, Processes for Responsible AI System Design and Development. Now this one again is similar, but it's instead of objectives, you need to document processes. So management should sit down and document the processes for responsible AI system design. Basically, what are the things you need to consider along the design phase? So the control states the organization shall define and document the specific processes for the responsible design and development of the AI system. So basically, management needs to articulate how you should think about designing these AI systems and the necessary checks that need to happen during that design phase. Now we'll get into the second subsection of A.6, which is A.6.2, AI system lifecycle. This is a large set of controls, uh, and this basically is the overall life cycle of developing AI systems from inception all the way through to uh, production use and refinement. So the objective of these controls is to define the criteria and requirements for each stage of the AI system life cycle. So the first control is A.6.2.2, AI system requirements and specification. This control basically says that you need to determine what the system requirements and the specs are for your AI system. So you can experiment and play around, but when you get to formal development, you need to articulate those requirements. Not much different than any other system development. The control says that the organization shall specify and document requirements for new AI systems or material enhancements to existing systems. So again, this isn't wildly different from software development lifecycle. Um, it's just targeted towards AI. The next is A.6.2.3, documentation of AI system design and development. So this is creating the packet of documentation that pertains to the design and development of AI systems. So the organization shall document the AI system design and development based on organizational objectives, documented requirements, and specification criteria. This is basically like an SDLC, but again, created specifically for AI systems. The next control is A.6.2.4, AI system verification and validation. And this control is really all about making sure that the measures used to test the system are defined. So the control says the organization shall define and document verification and validation measures for the AI system and specify criteria for their use. So you can think of this as like a, a user story or a business case development for a particular set of features driven by AI. You need to document what those are and give testing a way to ensure that those objectives are met and that it was designed appropriately. The next is A.6.2.5, AI system deployment. So once you develop something and you create it, you need to agree on how that system is going to be deployed. This may be a little different than your typical SDLC, depending on the type of AI you're leveraging. 
The control states the organization shall document a deployment plan and ensure that appropriate requirements are met prior to deployment. So it's similar in that it expects you to create a series of gates that need to check out and be passed before an AI system can be deployed out into the wild. The next control is AI system operation and monitoring. It's A.6.2.6. So this control is really all about defining how you're going to monitor the system as it's running. So it says the organization shall define and document the necessary elements for the ongoing operation of the AI system. At minimum, this should include system and performance monitoring, repairs, updates, and support. So with an AI system, there's probably a lot of different things happening in terms of external dependencies, data sets, uh, compute resources, etc. So you're going to have to spend some time figuring out how you're going to monitor the health of that system and how you're going to uh, monitor the performance and also know when repairs and updates and support may be needed. The next control is A.6.2.7, AI system technical documentation. So this control is really all about deciding what the technical specs are and making sure that those are in place and appropriate and that they're followed when developing AI systems. So this control is kind of long. It says the organization shall determine what AI system technical documentation is needed for each relevant category of interested parties, such as users, partners, supervisory authorities, and provide the technical documentation to them in the appropriate form. So that's a mouthful, but what it's basically saying is that you need to think about those stakeholders you identified in clause four, and you need to figure out what technical documentation do they need. AI systems in particular are kind of a black box. It's really hard for people to understand really what's going on under the hood because it is such a new thing. It's, it's very different than developing our typical uh, web application, for example. And so you need to spend some time thinking about what information do I need to provide my stakeholders to be transparent about the technical specs and the technical information related to this system. The last control is A.6.2.8. AI system recording of event logs. This one is also interesting because there are a lot of things happening with an AI system. There's a lot of intense compute going on. There's a lot of things that could potentially be happening in terms of decisioning. But ultimately, what you want to do is make sure that all of the relevant logs that could present significant information uh, are stored and captured somewhere. So the control says the organization shall determine at which phases of the AI system lifecycle record keeping of event logs should be enabled, but at the minimum when the AI system is in use. So what it's saying is at least record all of the things happening, all the decisions being made, the responses being provided, uh, all of the actions being taken by the AI system when it's in use and production. Um, but it also advises that you should consider other phases of the AI lifecycle to implement system recording and event logging. So think about what those logs are, think about what the triggers you're gonna to wanna to use to inspect and make determinations off of our, uh, and ensure that you have appropriate recording of those event logs at those different lifecycle stages. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you still have questions about 42001, please reach out to us at risk360.com to see if we can help. Also, make sure to check out the description for some important links to other materials that will help you as you take your organization on this journey.